Welcome, everybody, to the only podcast that is fueled by caffeine, MCTs, and butter. This is week 18 of the Ketogenic Diet Review. This week, I want to discuss um, beginning tips for um, anyone looking to start uh, a ketogenic diet. I've been getting approached uh, a lot lately from from people I know and also people I don't know um, wanting to know like tips to get started and it's a beautiful thing because you know when I started doing this this diet I I, I wasn't really going to tell anybody I, I knew I knew the potential benefits of this diet and by that I mean the benefits of your body running off of ketones versus running off of glucose and that was my main focus when I first started this diet. I knew it lost, it led to weight loss. I knew people got leaner. I knew all these things, but more importantly, I I was approaching it from I guess what you'd call biohacking. I wanted to see how I can like optimize my mind and try to make my body as optimized as possible. Um, that's not to 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 dissuade anybody from doing it for weight loss. Weight loss is a hundred percent a side effect of of this diet. For me, a side effect for other people, it's the main goal. Really, it doesn't matter what your main goal is, um, whether you want the energy or whether you want the weight loss. They both go hand in hand. You're going to get both of them. Um, so that's something to look forward to, I think, for anyone. But when I started this, I knew it was extreme in, in, this, in the sense of what other people view extreme being. I was even a little scared about it, to be honest with you, because I thought, like, wow, that's so much fat, so little protein. You know, we need protein and carbs are healthy. Like these are the things that I thought going into this diet. So I knew these thoughts myself, but I really wanted to try this. So with that being said, I knew the outside approach of how people were going to see a diet like this. If they see, oh my God, you're eating 70% fat, you're going to have a heart attack or you're only eating 25% protein, you're going to lose all your muscle that you've gained over years or, oh, you're only having 5% you know, carbohydrates, you must be starving all the time. And all those things turned out to be, you know, lies. I have more energy than ever. I'm never hungry. And I'm actually gaining muscle, which is so funny because I'm also injured. So it's like the diet doesn't make sense in in, in a traditional way of how we see everything as far as dieting, weight loss, and even muscle growth. It, It just doesn't fit that blueprint because you start to realize like, if this is the blueprint, look how unhealthy society is like maybe this blueprint isn't quite as accurate as we were told it was and anyways i don't want to go i don't want to go too off topic with that but that was my initial um interest in, in in starting this diet and really kind of um jumping into this and along the way i've met a lot of uh, people that became mentors to me um whether i actually got to know them or whether it was just through listening to their podcasts or maybe going to certain um you know, forums and, and like just, you know, going out there and like actively seeking that which you want to do. And that helped me immensely. And now I, I'm, I find myself in, in a flipped position is I get people asking me a lot. And I always have had this thing in my head where it's like, well, what do I know? Like, I'm just trying to, to, to ask people the right questions too. Like, I'm not, I'm not anybody's guru. Like, I'm trying to find out the answers myself. And then you know, I have to stop and I have to think also, like, I have learned some things, you know, I've been doing this for 18 weeks, and I don't know as much as the as this guy over here, but I've still learned a couple things um, along the way that that I wish I would have known, basically. And so that's what I wanted to do with this episode is, um, I, you know, my wife, she's doing a ketogenic diet now. She's been doing it for, I think she's been in ketosis for a week. Um, she's probably started realistically about three weeks ago because she cut to a super low carb diet. She was at um, under 100 grams of carbohydrates. And she did that because she was a heavy carb eater. And I feel like we're all glucose burners as a society. But some of us are, what I say would like is sugar, like we're burning more sweets, sugar, things like that, which is still glucose, or we're burning like carbohydrate stuff, which is either rice or, you know, bread, tortillas, things like that. So um, she, she liked carbs a lot and she thought she was never going to do this diet and then you know I guess it, it's intrigued her enough so she did it for maybe two or three weeks she went low carb and she's been able to transition into a ketogenic diet flawlessly and it may have been that low carb that helped so I'll put that in there as like a pre-tip 
Um, I jumped right into it, but I was never a big bread eater. Like, the only time I ate bread was on burgers and stuff like that, or a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, because I, I fucking love peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. But um, I was never a big bread person. So for me, going low carb was not the issue. For me, the issue initially was cutting out all the sweet stuff. I talked about it a lot, like in the second week review, um, with me just trying to find like fat bombs and something that tastes like a fucking um, Reese's or some shit, you know, because I was just like dying for the sugar. Um, but you know, that's that's the point of that is, you know, I'll put that as like the pre-tip is if you're a heavy, heavy, heavy carb consumptioner of like bread and stuff, it may be beneficial to you to wean yourself off it to do like a couple weeks like my wife did of um, low carb of like 100 grams of carb because when you're cutting from say three or 400 grams of carbohydrates to 20 that's drastic man that's drastic for for you I mean it's safe but for you it's gonna seem drastic it's gonna seem like this is not possible you're gonna burn out after two days and you're gonna give up on the diet so to give yourself the best fighting chance if you feel like that may be an issue it may be beneficial to cut some carbs and and go low carb so that's pre tip the number one number one tip is understand macros and the reason I say that is because it's understood that a ketogenic diet is 70 20 sorry 70 25 5 70 percent of your calories are fat 25 percent of your calories are protein and five percent of your calories are carbohydrates so I know that can be overwhelming I mean even for me when I first saw those those macros I thought wow that's gonna be difficult and you think all the same things. That much fat, how the hell am I gonna eat that much fat? And then you think only 25% protein, I'm gonna lose all my muscle that I've, I've gained for years. And 5% carbohydrates, I'm just gonna be constantly hungry all day, every day. And none of those things, none of those things are true. For one thing you're, that you don't realize is fat is higher in, in calories, so it's easier to get a higher you know, percentage of, you know, your calories coming from fat because fat naturally is higher in calories. Like I mentioned it, a cup of macadamia nuts is a thousand calories. So just like if you eat that and then you eat a thousand calories of, of anything else, fat is going to be 50% of your macros right there. So it's, it's pretty simple once you understand that. But I would severely, severely, severely stress that people download, like I use my fitness pal because it's free. There's probably other better ones that cost money, um, or if you're, you know, a brainiac, you can use a paper and pen. But I'm, I'm not that smart. Um, but on my fitness pal, it's, it's cool because you can, in the settings, you can change your macros, and so you can actually, I think it's set at like the standard, which is most U.S. diet, like fucking 60% carbs, 40%, whatever, uh, protein, 10%, uh, whatever, fat. Um, but you can go in the settings and you can change it. So I would change it to the 70-25-5. After that, you can you can do two things. One, every meal you can plug in and you can click on where your daily calories are and you can see a pie chart of your macros and you can see a breakdown um, next to that of your nutrients, of how much protein grams, how much, all that stuff. So that's hugely helpful. Also, the main thing I probably use that app for is if I'm uncertain what is in a food. So if I go into McDonald's and I'm like, which I don't do because I, you know, for my own personal reasons, but if you go to McDonald's and you decide, I'm going to get a Big Mac, whatever, or a burger, protein style, because you know you can't eat the bread. So now you can put that shit into your, your fitness pal, and you can see, boom, you know, double cheeseburger, plain, protein style, no bun. And then you can see, like, boom, you're able to see right there what the, what the, the I don't even really worry about calories too much, but you can see what the calories are, you can see what the fat is, and most importantly, you can see what the carbs are. So with this diet, really, the only thing you need to truly worry about are your carbs. Don't go crazy on protein. Don't eat, you know, which I think I, I do from time to time, and I still do from time to time just because, like, I like meat or whatever the case may be. But it's very easy to go high on protein. Like, I remember I went and ate um, crab one day, and... I think, oh, fuck, it was like all-you-can-eat crab or some shit like that. I don't remember. But I left, and I had consumed over 300 grams of, of crab. Like, it was ridiculous, 300 grams of protein. So that, that'll that do it for ketosis. You're, you're, you're stalled at best. You're kicked out at worst. So I do, I do caution. Like, you don't need to be psychotic within only, like, two ounces of, of meat. I mean, if you're eating a meal, you could have, like, four or five ounces of meat 
you know, you just got to make sure you're getting your fat in there, like most commonly with cheese um, or something to that extent. But really, you can you can make do with what you want. I, I use cheese and butter and MCTs and coconut oil. Those are those are my go to's and avocado and sour cream. Those are my go to's. But I've seen people that lean more towards cream cheese and lean more towards different things that have fat. And that's fine because it's whatever you like as long as it fits the macros, which that's become a new saying, IFFLM, as long as it fits the macros or some shit like that. And I caution against that a little bit, but it's it's kind of true in, in the sense of like as long as as long as the, the carbs aren't there and the fat's there and the protein is moderate, you can you can make meals. And that's probably tip number two is when I first started this diet, I was staying away from anything that had even the slightest amount of carbohydrates. I did not understand what carbohydrates truly were. I looked at the packet. If that shit said eight grams of carbs, I said, I can't eat that. I didn't know that it also had seven grams of fiber. So <laughs> I was staying away from a lot of shit that I, I eat now as a staple spinach, lettuce, um, broccoli, cauliflower. When I first started this diet, it was literally my bacon and cheddar diet. Uh, because that's all I ate. Because I ate a lot of bacon, I liked a lot of cheddar. I ate, I remember a lot of cream cheese and I would take cream cheese and put it on turkey meat and just roll it up. And like, that was my diet for like probably the first week or two that I started this. And so I was like, finally, like, I need to grow. I can't, I can't live in this, in this zone because I was burning out. I was tired of eating the same thing. And that's when I really started to do more research, which I probably should have done initially, but that's when I found out about net carbs. And I was like, okay, that makes a huge difference. So you got to know, you got to know what true carbs are, which is your net carbs, which is basically your carbs minus your fiber. Now listen to this part clearly, because it also is minus any sugar ethanol, not sugar not regular sugar. So if it if you're looking at something and it says 22 grams of carbohydrates and 21 grams of that is sugar, that product has 22 grams of carbohydrates. That is the net carbs. But if it has 20 grams of carbohydrates, you know, 15 grams of fiber and say 4 grams of sugar ethanol, then that product only has 1 net gram of carbohydrates. So that's very that's very important. Do not confuse sugar ethanol with sugar. Sugar ethanol, you can you can subtract that from from your carb count. Regular sugar, you cannot. Um, so once once you understand that, I mean, once you understand your net carbs, that that opens a, a huge window to to the all the types of food you could eat. I went from eating basically bacon and cheddar only to I eat a lot of salads now. I was doing bulking last week, which I've kind of stopped doing a little this week, which I'll get to that in a minute. But um, I was doing bulking, and for, for no negative reason, I, I, I don't do it right now. But bulking is just where you're adding just a ton of lettuce to a lot of your, your meals. So if you're eating, say, I was doing it with everything. If I was eating, you know, turkey meat and bacon and cheese, I added it on lettuce. Or if I was eating chicken and cheddar, I was adding it on Lettuce. Everything I was just putting on a ton of lettuce. Even one morning I did it with eggs and stuff, steak and eggs. I put on lettuce. It was unique, but kind of good. Um, but that that initially has a lot of carbohydrates. So that's where your my fitness pal comes in handy too, is because you're gonna see on the nutrients you're gonna see, or on your on your wheel you may see that you've had 36 grams of of carbohydrates, which seems high. But then when you go into the nutrients, you can see well, really I only had 14 because 22 of them were uh, fiber. So it's good to understand that because that's going to help you a lot. That's going to really open the door for lots of different types of foods you can eat. Now there's some foods that are always going to be off limits to you, which is most of your junk food. Any junk food really like that you know is not good for you, you can't eat it on this diet. Chips, um, candy bars of any type, cakes, any of those things, you're never going to be able to have it. You can maybe have ice cream if you want to go and get Halo Top which is pretty decent. Um, we did a review on that and on the desserts one we did, but you're never going to be able to have certain foods. So that's, you just got to come to terms with that. And once you get used to this, you can try to start making your own stuff. But um, there are some sacrifices you have to make, but once you get adapt with this diet, you don't even miss those things. Um, so uh, probably the third thing is, and I kind of mentioned this before is uh, protein intake. So, that is probably one of the most heavily criticized part of this diet. 
people will say that um, that carbohydrates are good for you. People don't really get up in arms that you're cutting carbohydrates out of your diet. Like nobody's getting furious about that, but they do get mad and start to criticize you when you tell them you're only eating 25 uh, percent of your calories are coming from protein. I had one guy like get kind of upset with me. I don't even know the guy. This <laughs> is kind of funny, but he got pretty upset with me telling me that why would I why would I eat so little protein? Like do I do I am I trying to get rid of all my muscle? Like um I don't know what 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 his deal was, but that I think is a very common conception that we have or misconception is that protein is needed to build muscle. And on a biological standpoint, it makes a lot of sense. But and the way we say it, the one gram of protein per pound of body weight, um, I mean, that would put me, I would need 230, because you go like, I think for lean, lean body mass, that I would need like 220, 230 grams of, of protein, because that's my lean body weight. My lean body weight is at 220 because of my height and my bone structure. So that that's a tremendous amount of protein. And on this diet, it's not realistic. Like, the most, if I go high on calories, if I do a high calorie day of like 2,200, that's high for me now on this diet. But if I go 2,200 calories in a day, then my fat is over 200 and my protein is at about 160, 170 grams of protein. Um, that's that's a high, high, high protein for me. And honestly, I'm usually never even in that range. 100% honesty, I'm probably closer to, some days I only eat 80 grams of protein. And some days I eat 120. And given my injury, I'm still not losing any muscle mass. Um, and that's the funny thing about this diet too is every, everybody has like a criticism about it. And it forces you to really change the way you see things. Because people will tell me like, oh, you've lost a lot of weight. You must do a lot of cardio. I say, I don't do cardio. Oh, but you're eating just nothing but vegetables and fruit. I said, I don't eat any fruit and I eat very little vegetables. And then people look at you like you're a space alien because what you just told them blew their mind a little bit because it goes against everything that they believe they know as losing weight, which is do a lot of cardio, eat a lot of fruit and vegetables. Limit nuts because nuts are high in fat, like things like that. You know what I mean? They believe that you have to go super low fat and just do a ton of, ton of like a uh, cardio. And I don't, I don't do either one of those things. So, um, get a little backlash on that. Sorry, I've gone back to drinking my coffee while podcasting because I love it, but we're going to get some awkward pauses in here. Um, so another another probably step that I would I would say, or another tip, I don't even know what tip we're on, but another tip I would say is um, intermittent fasting. So that initially, I think it's a lot of people nervous, but um, this is why I've stopped bulking because I've started, started fasting more and fasting is really the easiest thing to do to be honest with you and 18 weeks in I don't remember what week it started I think it starts around seven weeks you're gonna feel your hunger is gonna go away and for the first couple weeks I would still eat and then I started to ask myself well, why am I eating if I'm not hungry and it's because you, you still have this belief that you have to eat uh, you know three four or five times because that's what healthy is and um now I just do a lot of fasting. Like some days I only eat dinner, and um, but I do I do drink my coffee, which is still considered part of intermittent fasting. To be honest with you, you can you can have coffee. I recommend find a good single source organic coffee. Um, uh, Caveman Coffee they have a really good coffee, which um, they're very they're very smart about how they source it and it's good for you. Um, also though, Trader Joe's has, has a, a single origin coffee, which is, which is pretty awesome. I think it's the, the Kula, some shit like that from Hawaii. Um, it's a little expensive. It's like 20. So it's, it's almost the same price as if you just get caveman coffee. So either one, both of those coffees I feel are, are, are great with, with a ketogenic diet because, um, they don't have a lot of the additive stuff and it's all organic, which this diet goes perfectly with, with organic diets and paleo. I've, I've talked about before, they're, they're, they're not neighbors, and I like to say they borrow each other's sugar, which is ironic because neither one eats sugar, but a uh, little corny joke there. But I like I liked 
I like to take the coffee, blend it with MCT. I'm doing MCT oil now. Before, I was just doing coconut oil. So the only thing about coconut oil that I've experienced is I'm at the point where I was adding so much, um, so many tablespoons, like three tablespoons of coconut oil. I was at like 360 calories just from that. And also that much coconut oil was, was making my stomach very liquidy again. Um, MCT oil, you don't have to add as much. And for me, I've now been getting more like too much information, like constipated versus um, having like a liquid stomach. So, but I blend that, I blend the coffee, the MCT, and um, use Kerrygold. You can use other brands, but Kerrygold is probably the most um, available and uh, it's the cheapest. There's a really good brand out of Switzerland and another one out of um, Iceland. They're harder to find, even at Whole Foods, and they're about twice as much money. So if you get the Kerrygold, you, I get both the salted and the unsalted. I cook with the salted and I put the unsalted in the coffee. Please try the unsalted in your coffee before you try the coffee, the salted because I got super nauseous once from trying the salted. Um, but I just blend this up and I'll drink it in the morning and then I'm not hungry again until sometimes two or three. And then you could have another one of these or you can even have tea with MCT. Um, and that, that fat in the MCT and in the butter it's going to give your body calories. So the point of fasting is not to starve yourself of calories. I think about it more as a fat fast, which is I'm only eating fat and um, I'm trying not to eat any solid food. And there's different levels. Like I don't know them off the top of my head, but there's like, um, you have like your 12 hour fast, which is considered like the first step of fasting. And then you have like a 14 hour fast. And then you have, um, I don't know, like 16 to 18, 20 hour fast and then you have your full day fast um which they say you can do that once a week um but that helps i think that helps a lot because it forces the, the body to really 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 process ketones efficiently i do it every now and then i don't do it all the time i kind of just listen to my body now and just do what my body wants me to do and if i feel like eating i, I eat and I don't have any cravings anymore for sugar and carbohydrates. So I know if I'm hungry for something, I just eat because it's real hunger. It's not a, it's not a sugar crash. It's not a, like a placebo hunger because you saw a commercial on TV. Like none of that shit affects me anymore. So, um, and then probably the last, the last advice I, I would give anybody is, uh, I don't think you can do, oh, also sodium. I, I said this so many times, but it's hugely important that actually should be number one or number two after understanding after understanding you know your macros and understanding net carbs it's hugely important to stay hydrated and that means seriously drinking enough water like I drink about a gallon of water but some people say like um, that you have to drink 30 ounces of water within the first hour of waking up and that you should have another 48 hour uh, um, ounces before lunch. Hey man, I don't care how you drink your water. Just drink enough water. It's very important. We, you shed a lot of water um, on a ketogenic diet. So that's also where the where the where the theory of, of salt or the practice of, of eating a little more salt. You don't need to go salt crazy, but um, definitely you should be consuming a little extra salt. I put a little salt in every meal. I stay away from white salt. I stay away from any of like the generic table salts. You really gotta go. Himalayan pink sea salt. That salt is so much better for you than the other salts. It's natural. Um, it has a whole ton of different like benefits. You can Google them because I don't know them all in my head, but I've, I've researched it before, which is why I use the Himalayan pink sea salt. So um, definitely, definitely you got to get, um, you got to get enough water and that salt's going to help you retain some water, especially in the beginning when you're just, your first two weeks, you lose a lot of weight, man. Like you truly do. And that's probably with this diet, the only time you're going to lose water weight is because you, your body's going to shed all of its um, glucose stores and it's going to shed a lot of water. Eventually, that those glucose stores in your muscle are going to be replaced with by free fatty acids. Um, so, you know, that's where people say you could lose muscle mass. You just lose a little bit of size because the storage, you know, it's being depleted. So it deflates a little bit. And then once you get those free fatty acids back in there, once you're in ketosis, it goes back to normal. So you don't actually lose any muscle. Uh, but drink enough water, salt helps you not become dehydrated. You don't want to become dehydrated ever. 
I tell people all the time, look at the color of your piss. Like, it sounds so gross, but people don't realize your piss should always be clear. And even the slightest tint of yellow in your piss means you are st starting on a path towards dehydration. It can be a, the slightest tone of yellow, like barely, barely, like more beige. That can be considered healthy still, but once you start getting any yellow tint, and then from yellow, the darker it gets. If it's getting dark, dark yellow, you're severely dehydrated. And a lot of people are severely dehydrated. You also can smell things on this diet. It's so crazy. Like when you take a piss, you can smell. If you smell something, you know, like, wait, that's not normal. And then, you know, your piss will be dark and you realize like you're, you're a little dehydrated. So you start to really connect with your body and understand things like that. But um, stay hydrated for sure. For sure. Stay hydrated. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of it. Like this, I kind of talked a lot. There's, there's, I'm going to start putting things up on the website, moderndayneanderthal.com, just because there's so much info. Like you got to understand, like I've spent hours researching at this point, um, just the simplest things too. Like I literally spent like two, two hours researching once if I can take glucosamine because I've, I've had knee surgery. I got multiple injuries to my, my spine and my back and in my neck. And I like glucosamine. I feel like it, it helps with, with some of that, but uh, I was concerned about the, the, the carbs. There's only three carbs in there, but I was more concerned about how those carbs um, react in the body. And this is where I'm saying that this is probably the only tricky part about this diet is because little simple things like this, like the one of the tips I told my wife when she first started this is do not put anything in your body unless you know what it is because, you know, you take glucosamine and fuck, you don't know. That has carbs in it. The one that got me the worst was when I was sick. When I first started this diet, like week two or week three, I was so sick and I was like, fuck this. I took NyQuil because I couldn't sleep. And as soon as it hit my mouth, I was like, that tastes so sweet. And then I Googled it and it had like 20 something grams of carbohydrates in it. And it was all sugar. And I was a little pissed, but that was a great learning lesson for me because I've never done that since. I, everything before I put in my body, I, I look it up and you only really have to do that once. Now I know. Never, ever, ever take NyQuil. You look up broccoli. Okay, shit. I can eat broccoli. You know, I think it's like one or two grams per cup or whatever. You know, you, you can do that. Once you start to learn certain things, like, okay, if I want chocolate, I can eat 90% dark chocolate from Linded or whatever that brand is. I can eat two, two at the max, four squares, depending on what my carbs are like for the day. And you just start to memorize certain things. So it really becomes easier. But when you're approached with something new that you've never done before, you need to do the research. You need to, to, to look it up and, and check it out because you really don't know. Like I've found carbs hidden in things that should not be there. There's like, I've talked about it many times. Why should there be certain brands of uh, beef jerky have a stupid amount of, of carbs? And then you look at it and you're like, well, why did you put sugar in this bitch? Or if it was like a, one of the ones that got me was buffalo meat. And it was because they had blended the buffalo meat with, with cranberries to try to make the meat go further because buffalo meat is expensive and there's little things like that and that's what's going to fuck you up on this diet and that's what's going to trip you because the basics of this diet are not difficult. You get them down pretty quickly and they're they're easy to understand. The hardest part of this diet is the shit that is hidden in our food that nobody is telling us about and it's now your job before you put anything in your body to understand what you're putting in your body. I found out that Splenda or uh, yeah, Splenda has and it says zero calories, zero carbs, zero, 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 zero. Everything is zero. But in truth, those packets of Splenda have one gram of carbohydrates per little sugar pack. So I was getting green tea for a while and I was putting four of them in there. And that's four grams of carbs that I didn't know about. It's not the end of the world, but all that little shit adds up. So if you're not conscious of what you're doing, it's like four here, four there, four there, four there. And before you know it, you're eating way more carbs in a day than you ever intended to. So you got to be super vigilant about about what you put in your body and you got to really do the research and hey, it's annoying, man. It is a little annoying at times. Like at times I don't even want to do it, but you know, you only got to do it once and then you just have to remember. Now I know I don't need Splenda and it's very simple like that. It's But you have to do it. So the last thing I want to, last tip I want to leave everybody with is um, do not, do not shy away from from, from the ketogenic like lifestyle. I hate when people call this a diet because 
diets suck. Diets, diets fucking suck, man. Nobody, nobody goes on a diet and is like so excited to be on a diet. Diets just have this negative connotation towards them of I'm on a fucking diet. Uh, I feel like shit. Um, I believe that that the best things in life can be a little culty, and <laughs> that sounds weird to say, but like if you look at CrossFit, it's you know, it's very culty. If you look at paleo, it's very culty. The people that do it, they stick together, they help each other. Like you, you see somebody else, you're like, ah, paleo, cool, bro, me too. Like it's it's a little community, and the ketogenic diet is like that, and that's where the ketogenic diet and the paleo diet being like like neighbors that that don't share sugar. Um, that's where that kind of plays very in, heavy and in hand for you because you now have a whole community that you can reach out to. Um, much like how I do this podcast, there's people like Mark Sisson and, and Rob Wolf. Like these guys fucking pioneered um, like paleo. Mark Sisson is probably one of the greatest resources for a ketogenic diet. Like stop listening to me right now and go listen to Mark Sisson because this guy is is really fucking smart and he he has a way of explaining complicated things to where they just make sense and it's so easy to um to take what he's saying which is a very complicated you know theory in sense but he explains it so easily that it's like you get a lot of like wealth of information um and those are just two guys and they're probably the tip of the spear when it comes to um like paleo and ketogenic eating but there's a whole community out there. Reddit, I've talked about it many times. Like Reddit has a great little um, forum where people post the most common questions like, hey, what can I eat at Olive Garden? And people comment like, hey, this is what I eat when I go to Olive Garden. This is what I eat. And there's a community out there. You can talk like, what can I eat from fast food? And there's, there's a great, um, great wealth of information out there. Like a lot of people have already done the work for you. You just have to slightly reach out. And this diet becomes much easier when it's a lifestyle. I only consider this a diet when I'm talking to you guys. This is a lifestyle. Um, and when you consider it a lifestyle, it, it's much easier to follow. Like, could you imagine trying to be a vegan if you didn't actually give a shit about animals? Like, you couldn't fucking do it because, like, you, well, I can't use this shampoo. This is not vegan shampoo. This is not vegan clothing. And I'm not judging it, but fuck, that sounds so crazy. If you're not about that lifestyle, you can never be vegan because there's just, it's too much going on. You know what I mean? And a ketogenic diet isn't that difficult, but um, it does it, it does have its uh its difficulties, and at least of which being your macros and what to eat. It's like I said, hidden carbs and different things like that, and you know trying to really optimize your body on a ketogenic diet. That's where these forms come in, and that's where you know being a part of the lifestyle is a huge perk. So that's kind of it, you know. I mean, I hope I helped um, anybody. And I didn't want to go too crazy. I mean, if, if I sat here and, and, and gave you an in-depth on everything, um, Jesus, man, do you know we would be here for days because there's just so much information that I've learned. But I think the, the big thing, too, is research. Like, And that becomes a part of the lifestyle when, when you're digging this and you're like, fuck, I feel good. My mind feels good. I'm losing weight. I'm feeling like a sexy bitch. Like, whatever. You know what I mean? When you feel good like that. Then, then that's where the cultiness comes in because you're like, well, I like this. This is something I now enjoy. So I'm going to spend more of my time about this. And I'm going to research and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And um, that's only going to help you. It's going to give you more and more information. Uh, I found through things like that, I found a brand of tortillas, like a carb, carb conscious brand of tortillas that has three or four net grams of, of carbs per tortilla which that's fucking amazing. Most have like 20, 30 grams. I just recently found a company called Jillian's Bakery that does a paleo bread. It's usually frozen with the gluten breads. Th that fucking bread has one net carb per slice of bread. Like that's stupid. I, I wish I would have known that existed from the beginning because like you can make sandwiches and shit now. Like it, it opens a whole a whole new avenue of eating because you discovered one thing, which is bread. It sounds so silly, but that's where the research comes into play. And that's where you get these little gems. And there's so many of them that I've acquired that I'm not remembering now or that we just don't have the sheer amount of time to, to mention everything. But what I'm gonna, I think I'm going to start doing is I haven't been doing it yet. I think I'm going to start putting some more stuff on our website, modernday Um 
just like for people that are really, really into the, the ketogenic side of what we're doing, um, which at Modern Day Neanderthal, that's only a piece of what we're doing. We, with Modern Day Neanderthal, we're more about the, the whole overall experience of, we focus a lot on men's experience, but just life and growth and trying to better yourself um, in all aspects of life. So I didn't want it to become too heavy on ketogenic, um, but I think that's what, what I'm going to do. I'm going to start putting stuff up because there's just too, inf- too much information to sit here and talk about um, and still keep the podcast, you know, under 42 hours. Um, but I'll start putting things up. Like uh, the first one, I'll just do like a basic guide of like foods you can eat. Um, that, that I think will help a lot of people. But like I've said, the community's out there and the community's only growing. I saw somebody, somebody sent me a link on Instagram of uh, a picture that they had taken from the new Men's Health, which I haven't gotten in the mail yet, Men's Health. But um, it basically said why everyone should be following a keto diet. And I mean, I've, I've noticed even just since I started, when I, I had never really knew what a ketogenic diet was. I had heard like um, a couple people that I like were talking about it. Probably the most vocal was Tate Fletcher. Um, and I was like, this sounds cool, man. And like the more I researched, I was like, this sounds good. Like I want to really experiment this and like see what this can do for me. And um, like I said, I was doing it from like a mental focus and from like a biohacking the mind type thing. Um, not so much just the weight loss. The weight loss, like I said, was was a positive side effect. But for me, it was the side effect, not the main main goal. But like I said, that doesn't matter. But that was like the only time I really had heard about this. And I had heard Atkins, but I didn't even know the first stage of Atkins was a ketogenic diet. I didn't know any of that. Um, and then now, like, it seems like everywhere I turn around, fitness people are talking about the, the ketogenic diet. And once Men's Health runs this, it, it everybody's going to take notice. I talked about it like three, four weeks ago, five weeks ago. My wife was showing me that it was on um, the Dr. Oz show. Dr. Oz was talking about a ketogenic diet. So the point of that is, is this community is only going to grow. Um, and that's going to have a lot of pluses. It's going to have some negatives too, which which is going to be, there's going to be a lot of like fake gurus out there, which half a fucking head of information. And they're going to try to tell everybody, this is the way to eat. This is the way to do it. And they don't fully understand it themselves so that's why i always say even with things i tell you vet everything it's a possibility i could misunderstand things but i try to at least like really do a lot of research um but the community is only going to grow that's the point and with it growing there's going to be a whole a whole new like avenue of information out there of people like questioning things and experimenting and hey look i found this bread or i found this tortilla and i found this and i found that and that's how I learned about Halo Top ice cream. That's how I learned about everything. Is you got to be a part of the community. If you're just sitting at home doing this by yourself, or if this is my podcast is the only thing you're listening to, um, you're really shortchanging yourself because there's so many other people out there. I'm just one person. There's thousands, maybe millions. I don't know about millions, but there's a lot of people out there doing this, and everybody has their own gems that they've learned, and we all can learn from each other. So that's that. 38 minutes of hopefully it was beneficial I I don't even know but I hope you guys enjoyed it Um, please feel free to reach out to me if if you need help with anything Um, like I say many many times and I don't just say this just to say this but it's, it's truly a philosophy of mine I don't like to be seen as the person with all the answers that's not a pair of shoes that I try to wear I try to wear the shoes more of like, hey, let's let's question things or let's put our heads together. Like I say that all the time with Alex, like, hey, man, what do you think? Like, what do you think about this? Boom, boom. And we just go back and forth. Like, that's what our whole podcast is about is just us like questioning things and putting our heads together. And that like that communal knowledge is huge, man. Like I don't like the I don't like the whole like one person being your your leading figure and we just all sit there and listen to what one person says and nobody questions shit and um, I don't believe like that's the way to grow. I believe the way to grow is to question everything. And I try not to, to have any definitive stance on anything because I feel like once you have a stance or once you have a viewpoint, once I declare something like this coffee is the best coffee ever made, boom. Once I declare that, I have to spend my whole life defending why butter MCT coffee is the best coffee in the world. That's going to take up all my time and I'm not going to have time to to grow as a person or question things that are going to help me grow so um but with that said like i do i have learned some things and i I do believe in communal knowledge so um i try to share what i've learned and 
you know, these tips I think will help anybody in the beginning stages of ketogenic diet. And then I'll put some stuff um, up on the website, which is a little easier doing articles to get information out there, especially because once I start talking, I tend to go off topic and rant. I think everybody knows that about me at this point. Um, so I'll try to do something cleaner and clear and put it on the website, of almost like a shopping list. So it becomes very simple to understand, at least initially, I can eat this, I can't eat this. And then from there, you just do your own research and you grow and you add foods to that list. Um, but at least you have a starting point. I also, well, last thing I want to mention real quick, um, for anybody watching the video, my teeth look super yellow. I promise you, I do not have yellow teeth like this. Um, I drank a lot of coffee this morning, so I got some yellow ass teeth going on. But just want to clarify, I don't, I don't have yellow teeth like that. They're usually kind of whitish. So appreciate you listening. Thank you. Um, we have a don't forget to listen to the other podcast neanderthal radio that one's with me myself and uh alex we talk a little bit about some from time to time we'll mention the diet on there um and just also a lot of other funny conversations so uh for anybody that's listening to this podcast that may be something you enjoy as well also modern day neanderthal i, I will be honest with you i've gotten a little I want to say too busy, but it also may be a little lazy if I'm just being 100% authentic with putting articles up. But I'm going to get back on that, especially with putting up now the ketogenic diet um, articles. I'm going to try to get back into that. And so hopefully um, hopefully that will be another source for everybody. You can also follow me on Instagram, Ryan. I think it's Ryan Ingray, 86. Um, I post a lot of the meals I eat, so that can help anybody who wants to see like examples of the type of food. This podcast has gone 40 minutes. I wanted to try to start keeping these a little shorter, like 20 minutes, but a lot of information to talk about in this one. So hopefully it was entertaining. Appreciate you listening. Uh, goodbye.